the State Open of Virginia. Sponsored by Truist. I want to welcome everyone across the Commonwealth to the final round of the 2021 State Open of Virginia, brought to you by Truist and the Virginia Lottery. Lane Casadante alongside three-time State Open champ Robert Wren, Steve Schoenfeld, and Sean Robertson are out on the course. They will join us throughout the afternoon as well. And, Robert, this is where you make your bones in this business, so to speak. Mark Lawrence, uh, Evan Beck, and Jack Montague, all former champs. They've all been here before. How much does that help them on the final day? Well, the cream has certainly risen to the top here at the State Open. Now Jack Montague for his first birdie of the day to get himself back to four under. And he gets there one in go. the red. <laughs> Curve the enthusiasm. Acknowledgement. It's been that kind of a day for Jack Montague. I can understand that. Beck is back. Evan Beck, 11 years after his first state open title, has his second state open championship with a birdie on the 18th to beat Mark Lawrence by one. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our special presentation of the Dudley and Lanier Awards here on CBS 6. This is the more traditional setting for these honors after everyone has played a full fall season. Willie Lanier has been named on just about every all-time NFL roster that's ever been created. He was an eight-time All-Pro and is a member of the college and pro football halls of fame. And he continues to be a source of inspiration and knowledge for all of us, both inside and outside of the game. We are once again privileged and honored to have Mr. Lanier in studio with us. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, when you watch today's game, how encouraged are you about the health of the game and just about the interest in it that persists to this day? Well, Lane, it's just fascinating to watch the game and see the interest of fans, television, sponsors, everybody. And it's a, it's a tremendous game. But as for this year's Dudley winner, we give the floor back to the gentleman from Kansas by the way of the RTD. Mr. Phillips, take it Thank away. Thank you. And on behalf of the Times Dispatch, our readers, our subscribers, we, we appreciate the opportunity to give out this award. The 2021 Dudley goes to Brennan Armstrong, UVA. Brennan Armstrong becomes the ninth Cavalier to win the Dudley Award and the fourth quarterback from the Wahoos to be so honored. UVA players have now won this award in four of the past five years. I'm honored and humbled to be the recipient of the 2021 Dudley Award. As a football player at Virginia, this takes a special meaning since Mr. Dudley is one of the greatest players in our program's history. To be called the best player in the state of Virginia coming from Little Shelby, Ohio, I can't say I ever saw this coming. To now be a part of a group of players like Bryce Perkins, Micah Kaiser, Chris Long, and Sean Moore, man, that is really something special. Thank you to the Richmond Times Dispatch. Being named the Dudley Award winner is truly a great honor. And congratulations to Brennan Armstrong. Michael, I mean, really, he was leading the nation in offense, so it's almost a given that he would be the best player in Virginia. Not the last time we're going to hear his name. We're going to hear it in May, too, at the NFL draft. He's got a bright future ahead of him. To bounce back from the injury, too, go for 400 yards in that rivalry game, heck of a season. I believe he's the first player in UVA history to throw for 400 yards in three different games. I don't think anybody had done 303 straight games before he came. Mr. Lanier, it's the... The small schools are alive and well, carrying on your legacy uh, as only they can, and it's, it's great to see uh, that such good football is being played at all levels. Yeah, and a lot, and what is happening is that historically black colleges, as all of the things are talked about HBCUs, there's going to be a legacy bowl played down in New Orleans, which will be the draft eligible players from historically black colleges the week after the Super Bowl. Tough way for the Hokies to end their season. Lane Casadante saw it live in Indianapolis, and he continues our NCAA coverage. Lane. 
Yeah, good evening, Sean. Virginia Tech head coach Mike Young had nothing but good things and positive things to say about his team afterward. He cannot complain about their effort. He couldn't complain about their defense. The one area that he thought they might have come up a little bit short was handling their good fortune, especially when they had one of their largest leads of the game. Go up eight. Uh, we miss a layup. Uh, they score. You know, we're uh, where we want to be. We're in good shape. Um, didn't handle some things very well, but I thought uh, Florida played uh, awfully well, and and uh, and they won. They uh, they advanced. We go back to Blacksburg, and that's uh, that's uh, hard to swallow. Still an excellent season for the Hokies, and they expect to be even stronger next year. Their loss means there are only four teams from the Commonwealth left, and for the first time, all four are actually here in Indianapolis. UVA arrived today after ha after having to isolate and quarantine for an entire week following a positive test within the team at the ACC tournament last week in Greensboro. They only had one practice before they came here, but the mood of the team is actually pretty good considering they haven't been able to fully share what should be one of the most exciting times in a college basketball player's career. Thankfully, we got some good news that if we were able to test out this week a negative, we'd have a chance to play. So I think everyone's been really optimistic and um, trying to trying to take the quarantine as seriously as possible so we can have that chance. But, you know, my brother's in the bubble right now, so I'm seeing kind of what it's like without being there. So it, I don't know if I'm jealous of him or not, but um, it'll definitely be cool if we have a chance to actually go there. Now, Virginia plays Ohio tomorrow night. Later tomorrow night, VCU gets into the dance with their first game against Oregon. Head coach Mike Rhodes does not want his team to merely be satisfied just making it this far. Here, let's just not be satisfied that we got here. Let's see what we can do while we're here. And, you know, that's, that's the purpose of this whole week for us now. Let's enjoy this, right, that we are in the dance. Uh, but let's put something together and be ready to go here on Saturday to, to get a win. And don't forget, this is week four of Final Score Friday. Sean will have all your scores and highlights coming up tonight after basketball. The news at six back in Richmond will continue right after this. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to week three of Final Score Friday. Sean Robertson and I, happy to have you with us tonight for 11 games throughout the Central Region. Our game of the week includes a positive trend growing throughout Central Virginia that involves head coaches. That's right. Both Matoka and Hanover are programs that have alumni who have returned to lead their teams. Jay Parker and Sam Rogers both have Matoka and Hanover headed in positive directions. Tonight's winner will get a lot of momentum early in the season. Not to mention a big advantage in a crowded and competitive Region 4B. Just the second all-time meeting between Matoka and Hanover. The first in the regular season. Second quarter, no score. Matoka's Cameron Johnson squeezes through for a two-yard touchdown to give the home team an early 7-0 lead. Later in the second, Hanover quarterback Cole Elrod connects with James Poole. Good for 23 yards. Point after good. Game tied at 7 going into halftime. Second quarter, second half, though, Matoka would pull, a, pull away behind the Brothers Johnson. First, Quentin, a 20-yard touchdown run to give the Warriors a 13-7 lead. Then in the fourth, Cameron what ice it. He's going to break a couple of tackles. Then it will eventually keep his balance and would go 88 yards for the touchdown. Matoka led 20 to 7 at that point. What outscore Hanover 19-0 in the second half for a 26-7 win. Their first 3-0 start. Yeah, they're eating down there in Chesterfield County. Their first 3-0 start since 2006. No, it's no secret. No, those, those, those two, those two big fellas right there, man. They, they, they go to work, man. Those two big fellas, they go to work. Um, you know, they do an excellent job running the ball for us. So we, we got our, our feet there in the second half, and really, really were able to do what we wanted to do. Welcome back, everyone, to Final Score Friday. Our next game traditionally has not had district, only district importance, but usually some playoff implications on the line no matter when it falls in the season. But this year has started slow for both Elsie Bird and Monica as they're both still looking for the first win. If you take out this past spring, which was kind of an anomaly, the Skyhawks have never started a season 0-3. Monarchs, uh, Monica rather, hasn't started 0-2 in nearly a decade. The Chiefs have won the last four between these two after losing 18 straight in this series. Take you down to Chesterfield. It is 3-0 Chiefs. A.J. Lynch to Cahill Wells. 
He gets in for the touchdown, and the Monarchs have an 11 to nothing lead after the two-point conversion. Fast forward to the third quarter. Lynch fumbles the snap. Javion Williams recovers for the Skyhawks. That would set up a Jaden Stores 17-yard touchdown run. Skyhawks down 11 to 7. But then Keyshawn Jefferson with a 10-yard touchdown run for the Chiefs. They go on to win 23 to 13. The Skyhawks do fall to only three. Good evening, everyone, from the Diamond, where for the first time in over a year and a half, there will be baseball on the boulevard. Most of the players here tonight have not played in an organized game since the end of the 2019 season. Flying Squirrels manager Jose Algasil admitted to us last night he was a little bit worried about what kind of conditioning shape his players would be in when they returned to spring training about a month ago. But he was pleasantly surprised at how seriously they took that conditioning, even though they were were left on their own for much of it during their uh, during their time off the squirrels starting pitcher tonight is Tristan Beck who was originally drafted by the Braves three years ago he came over to the Giants in the Mark Melanson trade he was five and four back in 2019 with an ERA just under four 90 strikeouts in 81 innings pitched he is considered major league caliber by the Giants and gets another chance to prove it tonight the feel-good edition of CBS 6 Sports begins with women's hoops. One of the teams expected to challenge the defending WNBA champion Seattle Storm this season was Phoenix. The Mercury have three Olympians on their roster along with some newcomers. Tonight, we spotlight one of the newest members of the team whose role has changed in the past year, but her confidence remains strong. Megan Walker was all smiles recently when she hosted her first basketball camp at her alma mater, Monacan High School. A great feeling, you know, just having all my people here to help me um, get started and help me get to where I am today is a really awesome feeling. The place where Megan accomplished many of her basketball goals. Like, I would never think back to when I was in high school, like, this, this would actually come true. Being with the campers at Monacan brought back some great memories for arguably the most decorated basketball player in school history. To me, it's just good times with great people. Like, I just think of, like, all the relationships I built over the years and how, like, it's, it's still, they're still with me today. Monacan was the foundation for where Megan is now as a WNBA player. I just really have been enjoying the moment. It's really setting into me that I'm a WNBA player now. This is my career, and I'm going to be successful at it. Megan's first year in the league was anything but normal. I feel like you're always going to be uncomfortable. That's the only way you can get better. As a rookie, everything is brand new. She has had definitely some adversities, some hurdles that we, um, <laughs> that we had to go through, but that's part of growing up. The former ninth overall pick of the New York Liberty missed all of training camp and the first two regular season games of her rookie season after she tested positive for the coronavirus. We were in a situation, we were, we were going through, the, the whole world was going through. Megan averaged less than four points per game while she dealt with an injured hip during her first season with the Liberty. I just kind of took it with a grain of salt and tried to make the best of um, the situation I was in. Megan did that during the off season and she played overseas for the first time with a Sopron basket in Hungary's A-League. As athletes, you know, we figure things out. You know, we compete, that's, that's what we do. She has, has handled everything with class and with grace. Um, and again, I'm, I'm very happy. I, I wish all my players, you know, were like Megan. I'll have really an easy job. <laughs> Megan averaged over 14 points per night, nearly six rebounds, shot 60% from the field and over 43% from the three-point line as she led them to an undefeated regular season. It was amazing. I'm so glad that I was able to go overseas, play EuroLeague, play with great vets as well. Breon January, um, all-star champion, um, Gabby Williams, Olympian now. So uh, it was just great to have those people that I was so close to to guide me. When Megan returned stateside to begin year two in the WNBA, she switched uniforms. Megan was part of a trade from New York to Phoenix going from a team that was rebuilding to one with championship aspirations. Being traded from New York to Phoenix, I think was one of the best things that could ever happen for my career uh, with Diana Taurasi, uh, Brittany Griner, Scarlett Diggins, just having those vets, um, you know, above me and looking out for me and stuff like that is going to be great for my career. Helping Megan's transition with the Mercury a smooth one, both on and off the court. They're just telling me to be confident. 
you know, always stay confident. They're like, you're talented, you're able to do a bunch of things. I'm able to help the team in a bunch of different ways and they want that from me. The most important thing is she stays humble. She continues to learn and just put in the work um, and, you know, just trust the process. I can't be mad. I'm on one of the best teams in the WNBA. How, how can you be upset about being a role player? You know what I mean? So. I'm taking it with, like I said, taking it with a grain of salt. I show up every day, um, do my job, and just try to compete and help those guys out as much as I can.